Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. My name is Josh Kahn, Performance Director at the Creative Alliance here in the greatest city in America, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's such a pleasure to be with you today with Arts Across America, with the Kennedy Center. What a, a, a fantastic program this is. Um, so we do a lot of things here at the Creative Alliance. We do performances in our space. Of, of course, we can't do many of them right now. Uh, we connect with the community in many different ways. Um, but we thought it was important to really shine a light on a, a really incredible program that's happening in Baltimore right now. It's a collaboration between the Baltimore Rock Opera Society and the mighty Jonathan Gilmore and his band. Um, the program reclaims rock music as a, as a black musical expression. It recenters conversations of race in American music, and it's very important. The show today you're going to see uh, will make you dance in front of your little screens, but we're hoping it also moves your spirit and makes you think a little bit. To tell you more about that, I want to turn it over to Petula Caesar, Director of Community Engagement with the Baltimore Rock Opera Society. Petula? Thank you, Josh. In addition to my work with the Baltimore Rock Opera Society, I am pleased and proud to say that I am the producer of the show that you're about to see. Jonathan Gilmore and myself have worked really, really hard and put a whole lot of thought and intention into everything that you're going to see and hear over the next hour. So please listen and enjoy and think. This is the first part of a three-part series. We did part two a couple of nights ago. And if you're interested in seeing that or seeing the future show, part three, you can go to the Baltimore Rock Opera Society Facebook page and check all of that out. And back to you, Josh. Well, turn your speakers up, put that volume into 10, and please uh, stand up wherever you are, put your hands together. Well, let's welcome Jonathan Gilmore. This is Rock Opera 101, part one, American music. Listen as we examine the erasure of blacks from the evolution of rock music. Listen as we right a wrong. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. So before we start this show, we're going to start this with a libation ceremony. And this is basically a prayer to open it up to the atmosphere and to all the energy and all of our ancestors to let them know that we are ready to honor them. So in honor of those who came before us, Sister Rosetta Tharp, we say Ashe. 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 In honor of Chuck Berry, we say Ashe. 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 And the honor of that architect, the fabulous little Richard, woo, we say Ashe. 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 And to all those who came before us that laid this groundwork from the very first African kidnapped and brought to this country, we say Ashe. Ashe. To everyone in this room, we say Ashe. Ashe. May we all be blessed and moved by this. And to all of those who will come behind us, May the work be easier, may the load be lighter, may anybody that dreams have the opportunity to present themselves and show who they really are, proudly, freely, in their own skin. We say Ashe. Ashe. Ashe, 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 Ashe. Ashe. Ashe.
American popular music is built on the African traditional music that came to this country through the kidnapping and enslavement of Africans forced into the United States. The field songs and spirituals these enslaved Africans created from their African traditions created rhymes and rhythms that laid the foundation for all the music created in America since that time. Blues music is this country's original pop music. It was born in the very early 20th century. Its birthplace was the Jim Crow South, where legalized segregation continued to terrorize and oppress blacks. Even though slavery had allegedly ended, they persevered, and the African rhythms lived on.
Jimmy died. I dreamed this was the latest step in a plot being designed to eliminate blacks from rock music so that it may be recorded in history as a creation of whites. Future generations, my dream ran, will be taught that while rock may have had its beginnings among blacks, It had its true flowering among whites. The best black artists will thus be studied as remarkable primitives who unconsciously foreshadowed future developments. Margot Jefferson, Black Culture Commentator. There is pain gonna be
what y'all know about the blues. <laughs> One of my favorite performers and singers who I have on my shirt, Sylvester. Now, y'all know Sylvester, like my spirit animal, right? <laughs> I just don't do the drag, you know. <laughs> but in this room where we sit right now, we honor all black lives. I don't care what you are, what you say you are, we honor you. And we honor this ancestor who was taken too soon. Cause he was indeed a rock star. Let's go, y'all.
It is jarring and most distressing to walk into a room one has considered private and find it ringed with cameras and spotlights and insistent strangers claiming long acquaintance and making plans to move in and redecorate without being invited. Black music, and with it, the black self, was suddenly grossly public, tossed on stage, dressed in clown white, and bandied about with gleeful arrogance that just yesterday had chosen to ignore and condescend. Black, it seemed, had lost the battle for mythological ownership of rock, as future events would prove. Margot Jefferson, Black Culture Commentator. <laughs> We're gonna keep having a fucking good time. Now, just so you know who I am, my name is Jonathan Gilmore. <laughs> I am the curator, director, and your lead performer for this. Now, with us, I'm about to show off some people now. On keys, we have time. <laughs> Being super funky on that guitar right now. Right. We have Jeff. Come on, <laughs> on saxophone, we have Lionel. <laughs> on percussion, we got Ryan. Giving us that backbone right there. That's that, that's that make the backbone slip up real bad. We have Irv, y'all. And on drums, we have our illustrious music director, Phil. <laughs> now on support vocals, we have my girls. <laughs> My girl plus one. <laughs> we had a Maybells, Christy, Blue, and Kelly. Man, I'm saying all of this to say that, you know, y'all mind if I preach a little bit? That we all got a thing in this here world. That the creator gave us all an anointing and a thing to show off. Now your thing ain't like my thing and my thing ain't like your thing. But when we get together, doing our thing. Hey, what a time, what a time, what a time. Sing it for now. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
You don't smoke what I smoke. Don't think what I think and you don't joke like I joke. together y'all say when we get together doing our thing doing our thing hey. in order to help, help your brother each other. help your sister come on in order to help your brother Now look y'all, we about to really go in now. I do this in honor of my uncle, Keith Gilmore. I know his soul is right here with us. See, one day we was in DC and he pointed to the Kennedy Center and said, one day, and we was listening to LaBelle, because they were two rock stars. So I feel like this is all coming together. So vibe with us. Let's go. Somebody somewhere has grown impatient with the
We sing more colored than the Africans. There are a lot of colored guys who can sing me off the stage, but half the battle is selling it, not singing it. It's the image, not what you sing. The black wogs and coons and Arabs and fucking Jamaicans and fucking don't belong here. We don't want them here. This is England. This is a white country. We don't want any black wogs and coons living here. We need to make clear to them they are not welcome. England is for white people, man. We are a white country. Heavy, right? You know, when I partnered with Rose to do this, I was struggling on figuring out how to tell this story because I wanted to make sure that it at first, no matter what, was always centered in blackness. And, and that's hard because so often we are used to having to say, oh, but, oh, but. But I wanted this story to tell the story of how black people were erased from the evolution of rock and roll. See, we were fine to be a part of its historic beginnings. But when you talk about after the Beatles and after the Who, all of a sudden black people disappear. And we were still actively making rock music. This shirt lists so many who were part of that evolution, but their stories were never told. You know, it, it is so important to me that everyone be proud of who you are. And don't let anyone silence you. And we can respectfully do our thing. I got a thing, you got a thing. 
So I stand strong on this vision. You cannot silence it. You cannot change it. You cannot mold it into what you want it. This is the story, and this is what it is. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to the Kennedy Center. Thank you for letting us tell this story. Thank you to Creative Alliance. Thank you to the Baltimore Rock Opera Society. And thank you to every black person who has participated in art, music, in any form. I stand on your backs, your shoulders, your souls, your dreams, your failures, your nightmares, your accomplishment, your wins, everything. I'm only here because of you. And so now, as we close out this show, let's go higher. Let's change this thing up a little bit. Let's go back to the African rhythms. Thank you.